my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a video that I love every single time that I do that and that is my most anticipated fantasy releases So I'm gonna go through everything that I am anticipating January through June Even though it is February when this video comes out I'm still gonna go through the January releases because they are still new and I just love Scoping out all of the books that are coming out and I tried to make this as comprehensive as I could so buckle up because there's going to be a lot of books that I'm going to be talking about and hopefully you can find some books for you to read in the future. It is going to be mostly YA fantasy. There's a few either like adult or middle grade sprinkled in here and there, but for the most part, just focusing on YA. I typically will do these anticipated release videos for six months at a time, seeing as there are a lot of books that will come out later in the year that have not yet been announced. So I feel like it's best to do them in six month intervals. So let's just jump right in because this is going to take quite a while to get through the summaries of all these books. And first up, we have January. Okay, so first up on January 5th is Lore by Alexandra Bracken. And this is a Greek inspired novel. So every seven years the Agon takes place and the Greek gods are forced to roam the earth while the descendants of the ancient bloodlines hunt them down. Lore fled that brutal world after her family was murdered during the last hunt, and she has repressed that need for revenge on the man that murdered her family who is now a god. As the next hunt dawns over New York City, Lore's childhood friend Castor and a gravely injured Athena seek her out and offer an alliance, thus drawing Lore back into the world of Agnon. Just sounds super high octane and Greek inspired really cool. Also on January 5th is Crown of Bones by A.K. Wilder. And this is the first in the Amasia series. This is set in a world on the brink of the next great dying where a young heir will raise a powerful phantom. Meanwhile, a dangerous high savant will do anything to control the Nine Realms and a mysterious race will steal children and bring them into the sea. Ash is just a lowly scribe meant to observe and record and yet they may just surprise everyone. I was really intrigued by the concept of raising a phantom is kind of like a main point in a fantasy book. On January 12th, Across the Green Grass Fields by Shannon McGuire was released, and this is the sixth in the Wayward Children series. Uh, novels are kind of like standalones that can be read in any order, but they do connect to one another. So yeah, I read the first two in the series. I do need to continue on. So Reagan suddenly finds a doorway that warms her to be sure before swallowing her whole, thus leading her to an equine fantasy world filled with centaurs, kelpies, and other magical creatures. This world expects human visitors to be heroes, but Reagan soon learns that not every heroine is built the same. Okay, so we're gonna talk about January 19th, which had a lot of books come out on that day. The first book that I'm going to talk about is Winter Keep by Kristen Cashor, and this is the fourth in the Graceling Realm novels. And in this series, there are three novels that were originally released, and each follows a different character, I'm pretty sure. So Winter Keep starts four years after the end of Bitter Blue, where a new land is discovered to the east and one of these nations being Winter Keep, which is a magical place where there are like telepathic animals and there's little messenger foxes and people travel in balloons and it's very peaceful. And thus Bitter Blue sends an envoy to this land to learn more about them and discover their ways and that's about pretty much all that I got from the description. I mean it just sounds very cute and whimsical and I've heard such great things about the Graceling series so I think it's really cool when we have like almost like an anthology fantasy series where there's different books in the same world but all following different characters. Next up is We Free the Stars, Hafsa Fazil, and this is the sequel to We Hunt the Flame. In We Hunt the Flame, Fela Zafira, who is a hunter that must provide for her starving people. She disguises herself as a man in order to be permissible to be hunting, and if it's found out that she is a woman, she will basically be killed. And then we follow Prince Nazir, who is son to an autocrat and he is basically his father's killing machine. Both of them are legends in their kingdom, but neither of them actually wants to be. War is brewing and when Zephira embarks to uncover a lost ancient artifact that can restore magic to her suffering world, she runs into Prince Nazir who is also after the same artifact with a mission on top of that to kill the hunter. As their journey unfolds, an ancient evil stirs and the prize they seek may be the greatest threat. 
I've heard nothing but great things about this series. I do believe that this is a duology and I do really want to read it because it just sounds so cool. The next book is Hall of Smoke by H.M. Long and this is a new adult epic fantasy. Hesta is a warrior princess who has been banned from her temple for failing to obey her goddess's order to murder a traveler. After her village is raised and raided and she is the last warrior princess, she must set out to find this travel and rectify her weakness. But Hessa realizes that the gods are actually dying and she does not know if she can trust the goddess to who she had devoted her life to. Bigger, older powers slumber beneath their world and they're about to wake up. I always think it's interesting to explore the concept of gods and what it actually means to be a god and kind of that sort of religion and magic interplay, so this novel sounds really intriguing. Next is Amari and the Knight Brothers by, by B.B. Olsen, and this is a middle grade. Quentin Peters was the golden boy. He had two scholarships to Ivy League schools um, and was basically the star of his, low, of his low income project, Neighborhood. When he goes missing, his 13 year old little sister, Amari, can't understand why it's not a bigger deal. Then she discovers a ticking briefcase in his closet that he meant for her to find with a nomination for her to compete in the summer tryout for Bureau of Supernatural Affairs. She must compete against some of the nation's wealthiest children when an evil magician threatens their world and her own classmates think that she's the enemy. Amari must push past and pass the three tryouts or she may never find out what happened to her brother. This one just sounds really cool. I love the cover for this as well and it seems like a very magical middle grade, which I've been dying to check out more middle grade this year, so hopefully I can check out this one as well. On January 21st, The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick was released, and this is number one in the Rook and Rose series. As you can see, it's super thick, which is so nice. And thank you to Orbit for sending this my way. And it sounds so intriguing and cool. So we follow a con artist named Ren, who has come to the city with one goal in mind, and that is to seduce a noble and secure a fortune for her and her sister. But her masquerade is just one of many, as corrupt nightmare magic begins to weave its way through the city of dreams and poisonous feuds between the nobility rear their ugly heads. It becomes clear that Ren is at the heart of it all. The reviews say that this has like tons of political intrigue and it's apparently like dream magic which I find really cool so I do want to read this soon so I can get a review out and I mean it just seems really fun too like we have a con artist who's gonna con some people out of their money good times okay and then the last release date in January is January 26th first up we have a bow so bold and deadly by Bridget Kemmerer and this is the third in the curse breakers series so this third book pulls together all the characters from the previous books in the series so we follow Grey, Leah Mara, Ren and of course Harper the first novel is kind of a Beauty and the Beast retelling where a girl from Washington DC gets pulled into the world of Emberfall in order to help break the curse. And the, in this third novel we see all of the players from the first two novels kind of come together in this concluding novel to, uh, I mean that's pretty much all I can say <laughs> without giving too many spoilers. I adore this series, I just think it's great. There's some really good representation for cerebral palsy in there because that is um, a condition that Harper has. So it's really cool to see that incorporated into a story as well. And I just adore these characters. I thought the second novel also was just very well done, so I'm really excited to see all of these characters come together in the concluding novel. The next release is Wings of Ebony by J.L. When Rue's mother is shot dead on their doorstep, life is about to forever change for Rue and her little sister. She is taken away by a father that she has never known, separated from her sister, whisked away to a, mag a hidden island full of magic wielders. Rue is the only half-god in a place where leaders thrive on human suffering. Desperate to see her sister, Rue breaks the do not leave law and returns to Houston only to find that black kids are being forced into crime and violence by the same plague that threatens the island where she now resides and thus she sets out on an adventure to find a cure to this deadly plague. This one sounds really cool. I kind of like that it's a mix of urban and like a completely different world as our main character Rue gets whisked away to this other world and of course sisterly relationships always strike me in the field and the fact that she's separated from her sister is like so 
heart-wrenching, so I feel like this is gonna be a really good one. The last novel that I have for January is The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon, and this is the fourth in the Bone Season series. Bone Season is set in the year 2059, following 19 year old Paige who is a dream walker and she is working in the criminal underworld of Scion London breaking into people's minds to scour for information which is the only way that she can survive with her power. One day Paige is attacked and brought to the hidden city of Oxford where she is assigned a mentor with mysterious motives. If Paige wants to regain her freedom she is going to have to pretend to be nurtured in this prison where she is meant to die. I read Priority of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon and adored it and so I do really want to start on this other book and I love this other series and I love that it's going to have so many books because I just love like big series with lots of books to dig my teeth into you know and the fact that it's set in the future but it has a fantasy element is really cool to me as well. Alright we've gotten through all of our January releases and now on to the February releases. First up in February is All the Tides of Fate by Adeline, which is a sequel to All the Stars and Teeth. So All the Stars and Teeth follows Amara, who is the princess of an island nation. The next ruler must become the Animaster, aka the Master of Souls. The rest of the realm has the ability to choose their magic, but Amara has never had that choice. When a demonstration of her powers goes awry, she is forced to flee and strikes a bargain with a mysterious pirate named Bastion. He'll help her restore her reputation if she helps him restore his stolen magic. And as they set sail, dark forces arise. This just sounds like a really cool pirate seafaring adventure. I do believe that this is a duology, so I own the first book, so I'd be interested in getting this one and reading them together. I love a good seafaring time, you know? Next release date is February 9th, which actually is the day that this video is going up. And on that day, we have The Gilded One by Namina Forna. Dekka lives in fear of the blood ceremony that will determine if she is able to live in the village for the rest of her life. But on the day of her ceremony, her blood runs gold, not red, meaning that she is impure. And Dekka knows she will suffer a fate worse than death. But a mysterious woman comes to her and gives her a choice. She can stay in the village and suffer her fate, or she can go with the woman and she can join and fight in an army of girls just like her, called Lakai. They're near immortals with rare gifts. And thus, Dekka sets out on the journey of a lifetime. I always think it's interesting when we have stories where ma like magic is kind of seen as a bad thing, so I'm looking forward to it. And I think it's I think that there was some sort of like arc in one of the book boxes and people said that they really enjoyed the story and also it's just it was gorgeous next up we have a novella and that is called fireheart tiger by alette de Bodard, and this is a vietnamese inspired romantic fantasy novella so it's only about 100 or so pages so i'm really intrigued to read this quiet thoughtful princess thana was sent away as a child as a hostage to a Hazile Kingdom. Now she's returned to her mother's imperial court, haunted by the memories of her first love and magical echoes of a fire in the palace. Thon's new role as a diplomat places her in the path of said first love. Her former lover won't take no for an answer, but Thon is tempted by the fire that burned down the palace and the dangerous possibilities that it presents. I've never really read like a fantasy novella that has all of these elements and it's like super short. I think it also has a love triangle. So I'm interested to see how all of this is like squished into such a short little book, which it just makes it really intriguing to me. And then of course, on February 16th, we have A Court of Silver Flames, which is the Nesta novel, follows Nesta. And I'm so excited. We have our Akatar along that we've been doing. And so we will be doing a live show for this about a month after the release, so mid-March, just give everyone time to read it. Yeah, I mean, Aquatar is pretty much a staple here on booktube, and me, like everyone else who Sarah J Mass trusts, is just really excited for this book. Nesta is such like a fierce and stubborn and just like sometimes horrible character, but I think it's going to be so interesting to read about her and read her thoughts and feelings as she kind of deals with this emotional trauma that she's been through, especially in Aga War. So yeah. I can't wait for it. I will be doing a vlog for that specific book as well, so keep an eye out for that. On February 18th is Reaper of Souls by Rena Baron, and this is the sequel to Kingdom of Souls. So in Kingdom of Souls, Ara is from a long line of powerful witch doctors, but she has barely any magic of her own. Therefore, Ara undergoes the process of years of her life for magic of her own. And this borrowed power reveals nightmarish betrayal and anger. And the last, and the last release in February is February 23rd, which we're gonna start off with A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shutterworth. I love this cover, and this is an urban fantasy that takes place in Toronto, following four queer teens 
The Ironborn, half a fae, outcast of a royal fae family, a temptuous fury exiled to earth, a dutiful fae prince determined to earn his place, and the prince's brooding guardian. These four fae are living in Toronto and must form an alliance to catch a mysterious killer that is on the loose that is performing ritualistic killings. And lastly for February is Kingdom of Shadow and Light by Karen Maria Moaning and this is the 11th in the Fever series which starts off with a dark fever and this is a fantasy romance. Definitely one that I need to get to soon and this follows Mac who is reeling from the loss of her sister and she finds this hidden clue to her sister's death on her old cell phone which leads her to Ireland. There her every move is shadowed by the dark mysterious Jericho while the ruthless Valaine and Alpha Fae closes in on her. She's like a classic fae fantasy romance and I can't believe they're up to number 11 in the series so it makes me really excited because there's tons of books to read. Moving on to March. March has so many releases. I feel like this month every year is just jam-packed with books. First up on March 2nd we have Chain of Iron which is the follow-up to Chain of Gold which is the Lost Hour series set in the Shadowhunters world. The Lost Hours follows the children of the characters from Infernal Devices series, so there is a bit of reading in the Shadowhunters that you kind of need to do before you jump into this book. James and Lucy Herondale have had an idealistic childhood growing up in London with their Shadowhunter parents, with their parents at the London Institute. Cordelia Carstairs is newly arrived in town after her family has relocated in order to help Cordelia secure a marriage and save her family from ruin. And thus Cordelia reunites with her childhood friends, James and Lucy. However, a series of demon attacks on the cities spurs all of the Shadowhunters into actions and dark secrets about everyone will be revealed. I mean, it's just such a good series. This is seriously one of my most taste books of the year because I thought Chain of Iron was just so well done. And I love the Edwardian London setting as well. Next up on March 2nd is Infinity Reaper by Adam Silvera. This is the sequel to Infinity Sun, which is set in modern day New York City. Spellwalkers exist, which are a vigilante group that rid the world of specters who steal the powers of the, spell of the spellwalkers and other celestial beings. Brighton has always idolized the spellwalkers and wanted their powers, whereas his brother Emil just wants the fighting to stop. But when Emil manifests powers, that puts him in the spot spotlight to become the heroic spellwalker that Brighton always wanted to be. Next up we have Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab and this is number three in the Cassidy Blake series, her middle grade, and this third novel in the series is going to take place in New Orleans. We follow Cassidy who after a near-death experience now has the ability to see ghosts. In the first novel, City of Ghosts, we follow Cassidy as she goes to Edinburgh with her family as they are filming a ghost TV show, kind of like BuzzFeed Unsolved for the summer, and from there ghostly escapades happen. Next on March 2nd is The Stolen Kingdom by Jillian Boheme. Marlith has no idea that her magical powers are evidence of a secret bloodline, has the power to overthrow the current rulers in their greedy reign. Alec Thungrave is the spare heir and has always been uncomfortable with that position and the dark power that it brings. When Marlith becomes embroiled in a plot to murder the royal family, it becomes a cat and mouse chase of dark magic and political intrigue. Also March 2nd is Red Tigers by Amelia Wenzow and this is the sequel to Blood Air. Blood Air is about Anna who is the crown princess of the Cerulean Empire and she has the affinity to control blood. When her father the emperor is murdered she is the number one suspect and so she must head on the run and team up with someone corrupt enough to help her and that is Ransom Quick Tongue. But Ransom has his own dark agenda. Next on March 2nd is Phoenix Flame by Sarah Holland and this is the sequel to Havenfall which I read last year and really adored and I'm so excited for this sequel because I think we're going to dive into more of the world at Havenfall which if you didn't know Havenfall is this inn which is the crossroads between all of these ancient worlds and it's the neutral meeting ground for all of the representatives from the different worlds to meet and talk about the different lands and negotiate treaties things like that. Maddie Morrow is set to inherit the role of innkeeper from her uncle but when she is there for the summer everything seemingly goes wrong. A dead body is found at the inn, her best friend goes missing and her uncle falls mysteriously ill. Maddie must set step up into a role that she doesn't know if she's yet ready for in order to maintain peace between all of the realms. This was just such a really cool and imaginative contemporary fantasy and so I'm really excited to see where this sequel is gonna go. And I do plan on reading this this February. Next up on March 2nd is Covet by Tracy Wolf, and this is the third in the Crave series which kind of looks like the Twilight covers and it is a modern day 
vampire story where Grace goes to this academy and she is basically like the only immortal there. And then there's Jackson Vega, a vampire with deadly secrets who has been so emotionally closed off for hundreds of years that he feels nothing. Some unknown force pulls Grace and Jackson together, but their romance just might spell doom. I mean, I want to read it because it seems like a fun vampire-y time and I'm obsessed with the covers for this series as well. I think the design is just really good. Next up on March 4th, we have A Trial of Sorcerers by Elise Kova. And Elise Kova just has like the most beautiful covers and underneath the cover is also gorgeous as well. She posted a little sneak peek on her Instagram and I'm obsessed. And this is a YA fantasy. Water Runner Era is the most unwanted apprentice in the Tower of Sorcerers. However, that all changes when she decides to compete for a spot in the Tournament of Five Kingdoms. Era fights to be the champion, but as she's thrust into the spotlight, dark secrets about her past come to light. The next release date is March 9th, and on this day we have Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. I'm obsessed with this cover. It just seems so cool and gorgeous. And this is a sapphic romance. Tamsin is the most powerful witch of her generation, but she has been exiled and cursed with the inability to love. In order to feel this emotion, she must steal it from others. Ren is a rare kind of person made from magic, despite not having any magical abilities herself. When a magical plague ravishes the land, Ren proposes a bargain that will save her ailing father. If Tamsin can catch the dark witch responsible for creating the plague, Ren will give Tamsin her love for her father. Next up on March 9th is City of Spells by Alexandra Christo, and this is the sequel to Into the Crooked Place. The streets of Cree are filled with magical gangsters. Four crooks in particular, a trickster trying to put her crumbs behind her, a gangster, a warrior, and a resistance fighter must band together when Tavia accidentally gives a vial of dark magic to someone she cares about sparking a magical war. On March 9th, we have Sing Me Forgotten by Jessica S. Olsen, and this is a gender-bent phantom of the opera retelling. Isda was saved at birth by the opera house owner when she was cast into the wealth for having the ability to steal people's memories when they sing. She uses her abilities to keep ticket sales high in order for her safety. When she meets Amiric, his voice is unlike anything she has ever known, and she finds in his memories ways to perhaps escape her gilded cage. Issa spends more and more time with Amira, searching for answers in his music and his past. Next up on March 16th is Namesake by Adrienne Young, which is the sequel to Fable. Fable follows the story of a young girl who is abandoned on an island by her pirate father and forced to survive. Fable has to fend for herself and the only thing keeping her going is the fact that she knows that she has to get off the island to claim her rightful place on her father's crew. Sounds like a good seafaring adventure again. Also on March 16th is a Queen of Gilded Horns by Amanda Joy, and this is the sequel to A River of Royal Blood. This is a North African inspired fantasy wherein two sisters must fight to the death in order to win the crown. And for the last release date in March, March 30th, we have Rule of Wolves by Leigh Bardugo, and this is the most anticipated, this is the anticipated sequel to King of Scars, which follows characters from both the Grisha trilogy and Six of Crows. So we find Nikolai as he must journey to the dark heart of Ravka to uncover magical secrets. And we also follow Nina as she is doing some undercover spy work. So love it. I am still mad about the fact that two years ago someone's display name on Twitter ruined the ending for me, but you know what? It's fresh now. I can just move on with my life. Next we have Bone Cryer Song by Catherine Purdy and I loved first book, Bonecrier's Moon, and I'm so excited for this one. Bonecriers have a sacred duty to ferry the dead, but in order to come into their full powers, they must perform a ritual where they kill their one true love. Elise is set to take over the matriarchy, and when she's performing her ritual, she is bound to Bastion, who was on the hunt for a bone crier to exact his revenge upon for his father's death. Now they are bound together in life and death, and if one dies, the other dies. And thus they both must seek a way to break this bond so they can achieve their end goals, which is the other's death. Okay, and that is it for March, moving on to April. For the first release date in April, we have April 6th, and this book is Blessed Monsters by Emily A. Duncan, and it is the third and final book in the Something Dark and Holy trilogy, which is Wicked Saints, Ruthless Gods, and now this novel. I love the cover. It's so cool and goes a little way along with the creepy vibes. Wicked Saints is about three individuals. A girl who can speak to the gods in her head, 
a prince in danger, and a monster hidden behind pale blue eyes. These three individuals must come together to form a plot to assassinate the king. But it has way more to do with that, um, just like a lot of political intrigue between these two countries that have two different magic systems and have been at war for many centuries. So really, really intense and very cool trilogy that I love. And this book sounds so interesting. It is The Infinity Quartz by Akami Don Bowman and we follow Nami after she is murdered. She ends up in the afterlife known as Infinity. There she finds out that Ophelia, a virtual AI that humans use, has taken over the afterlife and seeks to enslave humans as she is enslaved on Earth. Nami works with a team of rebels to take down Ophelia and she must come face to face with her past and what it means to really be human. Next up we have April 13th and on this day there is Malice by Heather Walter and this is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty except it is a sapphic romance and we have a princess isn't supposed to fall for an evil sorceress so I do believe that this is a Sleeping Beauty retelling where an Aurora falls for the dark sorcerer that has cursed her where only true love's kiss can awaken her. Next is The Prison Healer by Lilette Noni, and in this book, Kiva has spent the last 10 years in a prison as a healer. When the rebel queen is captured, she is gravely ill, and Kiva receives a message from her family that they, she must keep the queen alive for the rebellion. However, the queen is going to be forced into a series of elemental trials in which no one has ever survived, and so Kiva decides in order to prolong the queen's life, she the trials instead. The next big release date is April 20th, um, on this day, we have These Feathered Flames by Alexandra Oste, which is a queer retelling of the Russian folktale of the Firebird. So when twin heirs are born, their fates are decided at a young age. Asya was taken away with her aunt, known as the Firebird, in order to ensure that magic remained balanced. However, when Asya feels an ancient power awaken within her, that means that her mother, the queen, has died, and a new heir must take the throne. Next is Witches Steeped in Gold by Sinanon Smart, and this is a Jamaican-inspired fantasy. Uriah has spent her life in a cell. Jasmine is the queen's daughter, but she refuses to give her life for her mother's power. Sworn enemies, these two witches enter a precarious alliance to take down a mutual threat. Never read anything Jamaican-inspired, I don't think, so I'm really excited about this one. I always love learning about new cultures through fantasy and works from people in those cultures. And one of my most anticipated books of the year, and that is The Crown of Guild of Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which is the third in the From Blood and Ash series, which has become one of my all-time favorite series. We follow Poppy, who is known as the Maiden, aka she cannot speak here or like she cannot be seen and of course she cannot experience pleasure because she is being kept safe for her ascension, which will ensure the safety of the kingdom. However, she just wants to be out protecting her family and friends with the guards. She lives a very isolated and lonely life. When her new guard, Golden Eyed Hawk, comes along, he makes her question everything that she has ever known and sparks her anger like no other. And yet a dark threat rises from a long forgotten kingdom. It's just so good. Like, just read the series. I'm obsessed with it. I'm gonna do a reread before the third book drops. All right, on to May. Now, first off, on May 4th, we have two books that I'm so highly anticipating from two authors that I really love. The first is Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller, and this follows a blacksmith with social anxiety who makes a blade that can reveal the secrets of anyone that it cuts. Ziva realizes that this sword is going to fall into the hands of a powerful warlord who will use it for great evils. And so she sets off on the run with her sister, a distractingly handsome merchant and a scholar who knows lots and lots about magical history on a quest to keep the sword safe long enough to find someone worthy of wielding it or find a way to destroy it once and for all. I just adore Trisha Levenseller. Literally, I've read all of her books and I just love them so, so much. So of course, I'm so excited for this next book by her. And I'm really interested to see how she deals with a main character that has social anxiety. And then next is Realm Breaker by Victoria Eviard. Crane and Amara is the last of an ancient lineage and the last hope to save the world from destruction. She's joined by a band of unlikely companions. Squire, forced to choose between home and honor. An immortal, avenging a broken promise. An exiled and bloodthirsty assassin. An ancient sorceress with prophetic riddle. A forger with a secret past. And a bounty hunter with a score to settle. Red Queen will always have a special place in my heart because it's one of the series that got me back into reading YA. So I'm really excited to see what Victoria 
Rivera does next. On May 11th, we have Illusionary by Zarita Cordova, and this is the sequel to Incendiary. Bernada has the ability to steal memories and enables the King's Wrath, a siege that resulted in the death of thousands of her own people. She's been rescued by the rebel and now works for them, but she cannot escape their mistrust and hatred. When Dez, the captain of her unit, goes missing, she must take his place and go undercover in the palace and convince her captors, her former captors, that she remains loyal. And I think this is inspired by the Spanish Inquisition, which is just really cool inspiration. The next release date in May is May 18th. First up, we have In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland, in which we follow a pansexual blood mage who reluctantly teams up with an undead spirit to start a rebellion among the living and the dead. And I'm pretty sure we have a love triangle between the main character who is controlled by this undead spirit and the undead spirit himself and a rebellious princess. So sounds really cool. Also on May 18th, we have Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the second in the Dreamer trilogy, which follows Ronan Lynch. And this is from the Raven Cycle series. So this is a spinoff of the Raven Cycle series. And I can't really get too much into what, call, like, Call Down the Hawk, Mr. Impossible, this whole spin-off series is about because the Raven Cycle is its whole other thing. Next on May 18th is this book that sounds really cool, which is called The Lights of Prague by Nicole Jarvis, and this is a vampire book set in Prague. So lamplighters are elite secret monster hunters whose light saves off the darkness each night. Domek is a lamplighter and he finds a mysterious will of the wisp which is a sentient essence which can either lay travelers astray but when bound will do the will of its owner. When the vampires of Prague are looking to lead a rebellion and consume all the humans, Domek must step up to stop them. <laughs> I mean, vampires in Prague just sound very intriguing. Okay, and that is it for May, and now on to June. First up in June, on June 1st, we have Grace and Glory by Jennifer L. Armentrout, who I just adore, if you can't tell. I have like a whole JLA shelf here. And this is the third in the Harbinger series, which is the spinoff of the Dark Element series, which I'm actually reading right now. So it is set in this world where there are wardens who are gargoyle-like creatures that protect humans from the demons. So it's a demon gargoyle type story, but apparently this book involves ghosts. So yeah, I'm gonna read it because I love Jennifer L. Armour Trout. And I'm probably going to save reading that series until the third one is out and then just read them all together because her books are so like bingeable it's great on june 8th we have the wolf and the woodsman by ava reed this is an unforgettable debut inspired by hungarian history and a jewish mythology which follows a young pagan woman with hidden powers and a one-eyed captain of the woodsman as they form an unlikely alliance to thwart a tyrant this sounds very intriguing. Lots of different sources pulling in. I think it's going to make for a very atmospheric read. Also on June 8th is Daughter of Sparta by Claire M. Andrews. And this is a feminist retelling of the myth of Daphne and Apollo. Daphne has spent her whole life training to be a Spartan warrior. But after an unexpected encounter with Artemis, her life is un upended. Nine mysterious objects have been stolen from Mount Olympus, and if Daphne does not retrieve them, the powers of the gods will fade away. I'm always down for a good Greek mythology story, and you slap feminists onto there too, and uh, I'm there for it. The next big release date in June is June 15th, and we have several on this day. The first being Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sandberg. Voya has failed her calling, a trial that all witches must go through, in order to come into their powers. Her ancestors give her an unheard of second chance with the task to kill her first love. The problem is that she has never yet been in love and so at first she must find the perfect guy to fall in love with him and then kill him. Next is For the Wolf by Hannah. Second daughters are meant for the wolf. As the only second daughter built born in centuries, Red must be sacrificed to the wolf in the wood in the hope that it will return the world's captured gods. She's almost relieved to go as she has dangerous magic of her own and she can't control it. But the legends lie. The wolf is a man, not a monster. Her magic is a calling, not a curse. And she must learn to use it before the gods swallow her world whole. This sounds like a really, really cool Red Riding Hood retelling, which I don't think I've read a Red Riding Hood retelling, but there's so many different versions of Red Riding Hood that I read in a fairy tale class that I took in college. So I know a lot about that fairy tale and its origins. Last on June 15th is Broken Web by Lori M. Lee, which is the sequel to Forest of Soul. And this is the second in the Shaman Born series. Sersha comes from nothing, but she plans to be something by training to be the queen's spy. After years of training, her plans are unraveled when the shamans come and murder her best friend. And then Sersha somehow 
renews her friend to life. Sersha is unveiled as the first soul guide in centuries and is summoned by the Spider King to restrain the souls that are restless in the dead wood. This next book comes out on June 22nd and that is Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard which is the fourth book in the Witchland series which is a series that I really want to read. It just sounds so cool from the description. Safi is the truth witch which is a power to discern truths from lies. It's a power worth killing over and so she must hide her talent. Her best friend, Isolde, has magic that is hidden even from herself. With a blood witch hunting them down, they befriend Prince Merrick and make him a reluctant ally. I don't know, just I've heard it's just a really cool tale of friendships and I love a good witch story, so and this is right up my alley. I'm definitely going to read it in the future. And the last release that I have for June is The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik, which is the sequel to A Deadly Education, which is about a magic school in which our main character goes there and she has this dark power. Um, you go to the school and you either graduate or you die, so I think you can see the stakes are pretty high. And I feel like this book just came out this fall, so a June sequel is pretty soon. I don't know if it's a duology or if it's going to be a series or not, but that's it. Okay, so that is all of the books that are on my radar for coming out this year. I really tried to make this guide as comprehensive as possible. If you got all the way to the end, please leave some sort of little heart emoji at the bottom if you don't have anything to say. Um, or if you want to let me know what book you are most looking forward to on this list, any other books that you're looking forward to this year that I didn't get to talk about. Um, thank you again for watching and supporting. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have some fun reading some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.